Okay, today, you guys, I'm going to read an African folk tale to you guys entitled Why Mosquitoes Buzz and People Live. Okay, but before I begin reading, are you guys familiar with folk tales? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to hear, okay? Well, Elvis, what's a folk tale? Okay, told by previous generations, okay, and they're also what? Tyler? Okay, so basically, good job. You're on the right track. Okay, what, Amari? They, they are all traditions passed from generation to generation. Okay, good job. Good job. All these guys are basically on the right track, okay? Those old stories are traditions that was told, okay, by someone else and was passed down the line from one generation to the next, Okay. Um, also, I want to make a note, you guys, that this book is also an award winner, okay, called the Carter Card Medal, okay? That medal basically gives an award for illustrations. Illustrations are what? Pictures. Pictures, okay? So as we go through the book, you guys notice some of the pictures, okay, some of the illustrations. But let's go ahead. Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears by Verna Ardemont. A West African tale. One morning, a mosquito saw an iguana drinking at, drinking at a water hole. The mosquito said, Iguana, you will never believe what I saw yesterday. Try me, said the iguana. The mosquito said, I saw a farmer digging yams that was almost big as I am. Do you guys know what yams are? Yeah. Sweet, potatoes. Sweet potatoes, okay? Good. What's a mosquito compared to a gam? Snapped the iguana grumpily. I would rather be deaf than to listen, listen to such nonsense. Then he stuck two sticks in his ears and went off through the weeds. <laughs> Can an iguana actually put sticks in his ears? No! Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. no! Okay. <laughs> the iguana was still grumbling to himself. When he happened to pass a python, the big snake raised his head and said, and said, Good morning, Iguana. The Iguana did not answer, but lumbered on, bobbing his head. Now, why won't he speak to me? said the python to himself. Iguana must be angry about something. I'm afraid he's plotting some mischief against me. He began looking for somewhere to hide. The, the first likely place he found was a rabbit hole. And in he went. When the rabbit saw the big snake coming into her burrow, she was terrified. She scurried right through the back and went across the clear. Now, was the iguana really upset? No. Okay. He did it. He did it here. Why couldn't he hear? Okay, right, because he had those sticks in his ears. So was he really being mean and just didn't want to speak? No. No, okay. A crow saw the rabbit running for her life. He flew into the forest crying, Caw, caw. It was his duty to spread the alarm in case of danger. A monkey heard the crow. He was sure that some dangerous beast was prowling near. He began screeching and leaping um, through the trees to help warn the other animals. As the monkey was crashing through the treetops, he happened to land on a dead limb. It broke and fell on an owl's nest, killing one of the owls. Oh. You feel sorry for the owl? I do. Okay. Mother Owl was not at home, for though she usually hunted only in the night, this morning she was still out searching for one more tidbit to satisfy her angry babies. When she returned to the nest, she found one of them dead. Her other children told her that the monkey had killed it. All that day and all that night, she sat in her tree, so sad, so sad, so sad. 
Now, it was Mother Al who woke the sun up each day so that the dawn could come. But this time, when she should have hooted for the sun, she didn't do it. The night grew longer and longer. The animals of the forest knew it was lasting much too long. They feared that the sun would never come back. So what's going on here? Oh, uh, thank you for raising your hand, yes, DeAndre. The owl, like, the same Okay, because right, when she got back, she knows that one of her outlets, okay, was dead, and she was sad, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. Alea, where were you going to at? Exactly, because they began to notice, okay, they knew something was wrong, right? Yeah. The night should seem to grow longer and longer. And since the owl, since he's the one that normally, well, excuse me, since she's the one who normally wakes up the sun, you know, she's upset. So she's not fooding, she's not doing anything because she's upset. At last, King Lion called a meeting of the animals. They came and sat down and around the council fire. Mother Al did not come, so the antelope was sent to fetch her. When she arrived, King Lion asked, Mother Al, why have you not called the sun? The night has lasted so long and everyone is worried. Mother Al said, Monkey killed one of my owls. Because of that, I cannot bear to wake the sun. The king said to the gathered animals, did you hear? It was the monkey who killed the outlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that day can come. Okay. Well, I don't think that's what happens, but I guess with the monkey, how he's hovering over it. Okay. Then King called, excuse me, then King Lion called the monkey. He came before him nervously glancing from side to side. Monkey said to King, why did you kill one of the mother owl babies? Oh, King said to monkey, it was Crow's fault. He was calling and calling to warn us, warn us of danger, and I went leaping through the trees to help. A limb broke under me, and it fell on the owl's nest. The king said to the council, so it was the crow who alarmed the monkey, who killed the outlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that day can come. The king called for the crow. That big bird came flapping up. He said, King Lion, it was the rabbit's fault. I saw her running for her life in the daytime. Wasn't, the reason, wasn't that reason enough to, um, to spread the alarm? The king nodded his head and said to the council, so it was the rabbit who started the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that day can come. So what does it seem like here, what they're doing? Pretty much, okay, yes? Blaming what? Each other, right? You guys can relate to that, right? Okay, instead of sometimes you guys taking blame for something, what you... You know, instead of taking the blame for your own actions, what do you do? He did it, she did it, well, they did it because of... So you guys can relate to that, right? Probably so. Let's read and see. Let's read and find out. Then King Lion called the rabbit. The timid little creature stood before him. One trembling paw drawn up uncertainly. Rabbit, cried the king, why did you break a law of nature and go running, running, running in the daytime? Oh, king, said the rabbit, it was the python's fault. I was in my house minding my own business when that big snake came in and chased me out. Is that really what happened? No. Okay. Okay, well, some of you say no, some of you say yes. Why, 
What I'm curious to know, Reginald is special, okay? Now please don't talk while I'm talking. Thank you. Okay, but I'm curious to know, why do you say yes, Reginald? Okay, so he was trying to chase him out on purpose, don't you think? No, no. No, but he went in, so the what? The rabbit didn't waste no time to get out, did he? No. Okay, if that would have been you, would you have done the same thing that the yeah. rabbit did? Yeah. You don't like snakes? No. I like snakes. I like snakes. I know you do. Okay. So let's continue. Let's continue. So, the king said to the council, so it was the python who scared the rabbit, who started the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the outlet, and now Mother Owl will wake the sun so that the day can come. 